training for 14 years now. I'm a Jiu-Jitsu black belt under Richie Kwan and Norman Vessels and I train out of Kwan Vessels Academy. So the first time I ever saw Jiu-Jitsu was a UFC card like way back in 2003 and I remember the commentators saying uh, Jiu-Jitsu is like the ultimate martial art for mixed martial arts. So that like piqued my interest, I was, I was about 17 at the time, uh, begged my parents to go and try Jiu-Jitsu out. My mom's like super um, She's very like, uh, she like wanted to look after me. She never wanted me to do like contact sports and stuff. So it was a flat out no for my parents. Uh, so the moment I left home, I left home at about 21, I decided my, I need to go find this jiu-jitsu thing. And I uh, found a gym out in Alberton called Figure Four. Started training with Nolan Swanepoel uh, in 2009. And then eventually went over to Quantum Tribe in 2010 to start Gi Jiu-Jitsu itself. So I've been at it for about 14 years now. What would you say it was that kept you going back to Jiu-Jitsu day in, day out? I think absolutely getting destroyed by people day in, day out is actually what made me fall in love with Jiu-Jitsu. I think the fact that it's so difficult and that it takes so many years to become proficient in Jiu-Jitsu, uh, that's what kind of like kept me at it. Like I didn't like losing. And uh, I think you get two types of guys that do Jiu-Jitsu. The guys that lose and then they don't want to do it anymore because they keep losing. And the guys that lose that want to keep doing it until they stop losing. I was the latter. And um, once I got into like, like midway through Blue Belt and I was competing a lot and winning a lot more, I think that really sparked like my deep desire to like continue Jiu-Jitsu for the rest of my life and uh, try and have a competitive career. Uh, I competed until Purple Belt and that's kind of like when I ventured off to MMA. Um, but I think if I had like a decent outlet for Jiu-Jitsu, I would have stayed in Jiu-Jitsu the entire time regular competition for you to, to compete more regularly and, and why is that important? Yeah, so like when I got to Purple Belt, um, I competed a lot. I won a lot at that stage. Um, the competition scene was a little bit different there. We primarily had the feeler competitions. We didn't have really an organizing body and we had a couple of uh, promoters doing some events. Um, and I'd won pretty much most of the competitions and there wasn't really another step to go to. This was like the end of it, right? So I was looking for another competitive outlet. Had there been like professional jiu-jitsu, like we've got now with Sub Kings, where um, you're getting the best guys in the country to compete against each other, that would have definitely been the next step. But because that didn't exist, I kind of moved into the MMA space, which wasn't something I really loved. I mean, I, I, I enjoy watching MMA, I enjoy uh, training striking and all of that, but my passion was jiu-jitsu. Um, so I spent a couple of years doing MMA, in something I didn't really love. Whereas if I had this type of outlet at that stage, I think I would have stuck to Jiu-Jitsu and continued with that matter.
what would you say or why would you say you feel it's quite important for, for like black belts, especially newer age black belts to compete for South Africa? Like what do you think it benefits that person and jiu-jitsu itself? I think coming back to what I previously said regarding uh, there was a stage in jiu-jitsu where you couldn't get any further. So a lot of guys that were at a high level either stopped competing or they moved into mixed martial arts, right? Guys like Francois Krunewald, myself and a couple of other guys who didn't really have the next outlet to go to, moved into MMA. So I think a lot of guys then changed their career path into MMA and I think a lot of the other guys just stopped competing. And now it's like trying to rebuild the culture that the higher belts do compete. And there's been a lot of guys that have like led the way with that, like uh, Jamie Gimmel and Brandon Newman, you know, like those guys have always put themselves out there and have a high level of respect for those guys. Um, I think now we're at a point where there's enough black belts enough brown belts that we can build a community of higher belts that compete and um, for a black belt to go to a local tournament and compete against blue belts and white belts, purple belts, uh, it's not, there's not really much to win at that stage, right? Because there's a high expectation for them to win and most of the time they will win but in Jiu Jitsu it's not as linear as uh, he's a higher belt he'll definitely win. Sometimes things happen, submissions come on quickly. So there was a lot to lose for those higher belts to compete against white belts, blue belts, purple belts, and not much to gain. So I think the culture kind of like um, was that once you get to brown belt, purple belt, uh, brown belt, br black belt, you just moved along, you know, unless there was black belts coming in to compete against you. But now I think there's enough of us that we can get black belt divisions going, even if it's black belt and brown belt divisions to going and start building it from there. It, it seemed like things shifted quite quickly for you in your mind to compete again. Yeah. What, what was the driving force behind that? When I started Jiu Jitsu in uh, 2009, I used to watch all the IBWJ World Championships. And my primary goal when I started Jiu Jitsu was man, one day I wish I could be a black belt compete, competing at an IBWJ event against other black belts. Um, and then, like, over the years, I kind of forgot about that dream. And obviously, my career went to different paths. Um, and then, when I got to black belt, I realized, you know, I'm, I'm still young enough that I can compete. And I'm now at the point where that dream that I had when I was a white belt to compete as a black belt at IBWJF can now be a reality. So as soon as I got my black belt, I immediately decided that uh, I want to compete again. My wife gave me a black belt present of purchasing me a trip to Europe to go compete at Europeans. And I obviously understood it was a tall order being a one month old black belt competing against some guys that had won major titles at black belt adult division already in the IBWJF. So it was a pretty much a big ex like experience trip for me. I wanted to like feel what it was like to compete. Now the primary goal in my Jiu Jitsu career is to medal at black belt at an IBWJF event. Sure. And everything I'm doing from now onwards is building up to that point that I, I'm a competitive black belt on the highest international circuit. What do you think is, is um, in it for you, like coming out onto a big stage with a title on the line, in the gi against a really good competitor, like, like what is all, how do you view all of that? So when I decided to come back and compete locally, um, I wanted to compete against the best guys that were willing to compete against me. Sure. So when the, we started having the discussion, I was like, well, Vlad's the number one guy in the country at 70 kgs, right? The weights I compete at in the gi. Um, so the primary objective was to compete against the number one guy and use that as sort of like a measuring stick to see like where am I against this guy that's had success internationally. He's a second degree black belt, medaled at, uh, at uh, World Pro Masters. Um, and the primary objective was if I can beat Vlad, which I honestly truly believe I can, uh, this will give me a great indication of where I am in terms of the other people that I would need to compete against internationally uh, on the Jiu Jitsu scene, especially in the Gi. Gi is the primary objective right now, and once I can achieve something in the Gi, then I'll move back onto no Gi. Um, so that was the primary driving force. If Vlad wasn't available, we would have looked for other options, but he's the number one guy, and that's why I wanted to specifically compete against Vlad.
might look for you, you know, leading from the front, what, what's important about that? Like um, performance base versus constantly winning and, and, and where's the drive behind that? And, and what does it mean to you to, to go out and lead the team from the front? Well, I think primarily it's setting a good example, right? So it's to put in a strong camp, train hard, train properly, right? Get to the event, act professionally, and put on the best performance you can. And I think if I can display that to the team, it, it sets a standard that the team have to adhere to, right? Uh, it's not easy being a coach and an athlete, and often we say, uh, especially in our team, that you want all the other on the day, right? So you'll never find us, the coach, competing the same time as the athletes, are, uh, as, as when they have to coach. So that's why, second of June, I won't be coaching, and other guys will come into that role. Um, and then the roles will be reversed later on in the, in the event. But it really is uh, for me to set a standard, right, that everyone can look at and uh, hold themselves accountable to when they're preparing for events. Um, I think that also um, it's a lot easier to lead people when you have an experience in that uh, area. So it was easy, it's easy for me to coach and give people advice in local competition because I've, I've had so many matches in local competition. When it came to MMA, I had six or seven fights in MMA. I can speak from experience. I've never competed in a professional event, so it's something that I want to do, and it, it also gives me um, that extra bit of experience for me to pass, to pass on knowledge and advice to upcoming athletes. Well, submission only really is a rule set that uh, favors my style of jiu-jitsu, right? I'm very much a submission orientated grappler and at the moment I'm trying to adapt to a more points orientated style because the end goal is to medal at an IBWJF black belt event. So, but with that said, I'm only a couple months into this process of, of it, so I'm still very much submission orientated and that's the primary goal always is to get the submission. So I think what you can expect is a decent pace with a lot of submission attempts um, and yeah, just try and push the pace.